Gina G. How's this? How's this? You didn't tell me how my moustache looks today. Do I always? Do I always say beforehand? I do. Uh, I do the quote. Uh, oh, was it? Girl bait, sir. Pure bloody girl bait. You'll be combing women out of your moustache for weeks. Stop it. <laughs> Uh, this is looking very nice. Have you got any wax in there? We're not sponsored oh, yeah. by any wax companies. No, we need to be sponsored by wax or something. Yes, I do. Oh, I, 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 I know someone's email. I, I got it right here. There you go. I, I'm not going to show you the top. I'm just going to show you the back of it. That's it. There you go. See, see back, of, uh, back of mustache box owner. If you want us to have the front shown, then you've got to pay us. Gina, <laughs> Gina G. Hello to Dutch and James. Did you ever see someone get thrown out of a locker room for being a rookie or not following the wrestler's code or somehow disrespecting a veteran? Also, do you remember any of the wrestler's courts in the mid-90s in the WWF? If so, who was in the dock, who was prosecuting, defending, and who was the judge? What was the punishment handed down? So we'll take uh, the locker room bit first. Do you remember anyone getting thrown out for any reason from the locker room? It, Enzo. Okay. <laughs> he got thrown out, but I wasn't there. I, was, I just had gone. He got thrown out for running his mouth, I think, because he had come up from NXT and he had a mouth on him. And I think they put him out in the hallway, made him dress out in the hallway, which is a bad place to, to dress because where are you going to leave your wallet? Where are you going to leave your watch? Where are you going to leave your rings? In the hallway? Everybody comes through the hallway. So... Unless you want to stash all that stuff on you when you go to the ring, you may come back to nothing. Mm -hmm. And that has been known to happen in wrestling dressing rooms. Where you got to really watch, though, is independent dressing rooms. Mm -hmm. Because when I go into an independent dressing room, I don't do it anymore. You don't know any of those guys in there. Hell, one guy may have killed his wife and family and then come down to wrestle that night. He may have been a damn mass murderer. You didn't know. Or he could have robbed a 7-Eleven, shot a guy and come in. So you got to watch when you go in there and you don't know who is friends with who. You got to watch. Or who's mad at who. So a fight could break out. You're the last one to know. So when I would go into an independent show, I'd go to the back in the corner and I'd sit down where the whole dressing room was in front of me. So if there was some trouble down there, I could see it. Mm. Or if there was some trouble over here, I could hear it. So I watched what I did. But uh, uh, Enzo was the only one that I can recall that got thrown out of dressing rooms. Uh, now, the other half of the question is wrestlers caught in the mid-90s WWF. Now, of course, you are the inventor of wrestlers caught for people who are in the know. Uh, originally, I'll, I'll fill in the blanks and then we'll move on to the question. You originally invented it just to persecute The Undertaker constantly for romancing whatever girl happened to be in that town or for turning up four seconds late or whatever it might have been. <laughs> uh, but yeah. for, in the WWF in the mid-90s, it became somewhat of a bigger thing, I believe. Uh, who were the... Uh, I'm presuming Undertaker was the judge and prosecutor. But who were the judges, prosecutors, defendants, and who would find themselves in the dock in the WWF in the mid-90s? Who did they put on? The Undertaker was the judge. The prosecutor was JBL. And the defendant was whoever they didn't like that week. And they would call it all together before everybody, like when everybody finished their afternoon stuff, they call it right before the show started, and it took about 30 minutes, and they would draw a pretty sizable crowd, and they would call witnesses, and I can't remember who they tried, but they have done several and convicted them because it is somewhat of a kangaroo court. They're going to be convicted. <laughs> and they and and they and the deal was if you're you were called in front of wrestler's court, I think JBL would issue a subpoena, an actual subpoena. You're hereby ordered to appear, blah, blah, blah. And then they would pick a little bit of a jury, I think, maybe, or maybe it was a judge's decision. And I forgot one of the things is, is not paying a bar bill 
or mooching off somebody or letting somebody else buy drinks and you're not paying. But the whole intent was it was not necessary to bring attention to it. It was, but it was to embarrass the guy. And if the guy got too, uh, too belligerent, well, they just judge would hit his gavel and they would just render the verdict right then. And some of it was financial and some of it was you know, more humiliating, like he would have to pick up some guy's dirty clothes or something. But that is a case where the this prosecutor, this JBL guy, Justin Bradshaw, never lost a case. <laughs> and uh, Undertaker was called the hanging judge. Mm. So Now, there's certain stories I've heard where to butter up the judge, the undertaker, you might take him a bottle of Jack or get JBL a case of beer beforehand, you know, so the punishment night might not be as bad. Is is that something that ever happened? Well, I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure it happened. But I think JBL, if he got a case of beer, he'd just say, well, I can't admit it. It can't affect this case, <laughs> and he'd convict, <laughs> he'd convict the guy anyway. <laughs> what, what, I, need, I need to ask him that. Hey, we need to have him as a guest. I think we should. I was going to just suggest the same thing. We should have. Uh, we should definitely have John on. 